TikTok is a huge opportunity for small businesses, and I'm excited to see so many of you getting involved on the platform. However, I do see a lot of mistakes that you're making that are hurting your ads. So I want to go over those today and show you how to prevent them or how to fix them. Let's look at the biggest mistakes that I see on the platform. If you can fix these, then you can save money and you can run more effective ads. I'll also show you how to do automated creative later on, so stick around for that. Hi, I'm Morgan, a digital marketing professional with Life Marketing, and I'm here to talk to you about the seven biggest mistakes that I see small businesses make on TikTok. Let me show you how you can avoid them and make the most out of your budget. So here are the biggest mistakes that I see. Number one is repurposing content from other platforms to use onto TikTok. Number two is that companies that are advertising clearly don't understand the platform and don't spend time on it. Number three is neglecting to gather and use user-generated content and not working with influencers. The fourth is only running a paid ad strategy and not doing any organic posting or very infrequent organic posting. The fifth is getting your targeting wrong, like not using custom and lookalike audiences. The sixth is ignoring comment sections or only responding to one or two comments. And the seventh is being unfamiliar with all of the creative tools that you have available to you on TikTok. Let's get into the video. First, we'll talk about repurposing content from other platforms onto TikTok and why that's not a good idea. Now, so far, this strategy has worked pretty well for marketers. Most platforms are generally the same. For example, a feed on Instagram is pretty much a feed on Facebook, which is pretty much a feed on Twitter. You get my drift. So before marketers could make one graphic and then just resize it and post it, use a few less hashtags or characters depending on the platform, and they're done. It's not so with TikTok. The types of content that people are engaging with on TikTok and that works well is not the type of content that's doing well on other platforms. You really need to approach your TikTok content creation from a completely different place than all of your other content creation. Now, I think a big part of this problem is because companies don't understand the platform very well, and that's something that can change. Now, a note about repurposing content, you can repurpose your TikTok content on other platforms, that are adopting TikTok style video sharing. For example, Reels on Instagram and YouTube Shorts are great places where you can also post those really short form videos that you're making for TikTok. So let's talk a little bit about companies not understanding the platform. Now it's really important that you as an advertiser on TikTok understands the platform. So I will be spending a little bit of time in this section going over a few things that you can do. I also include how I like to learn a new platform when something new and exciting comes out. So maybe those tips will help you as well. And before I get into those tips, I want to encourage you, yes, you, the person watching this, to create a TikTok account if you haven't already. You don't have to brand it or attach your name to it or anything. It can just be a burner account. I want you to have one that you can log into so that you can follow some of my tips. I also recommend scheduling time to discover the platform in your calendar so that you don't miss out, especially if you're not naturally interested in it. I like to spend 20 to 30 minutes at a time if I can stop myself. I'll actually be amazed if you can spend time on the app and not just find yourself continuing to scroll. So here's what I do when I'm learning a new platform. I create a burner account like I talked to you before because I'm just there to observe. Of course, I download the app. That way it's accessible and with me wherever I am. And like I mentioned, I schedule time to use it daily so it doesn't slip my mind or if it's not something I'm super excited about, it's not something that I procrastinate. Now when I'm in the platform, I click every single button. I scroll through everything. I will follow trails that lead to nowhere. This gives me a good idea of what's available on the app and all the places that I can go, and it often helps me discover some tools that most people aren't using. Then I'll go to the feed after I follow some accounts to get an idea of what's being posted and kind of the tone of the platform and how people are engaging. I like to go through and follow creators who I think are making really interesting content, either that I would like to replicate for clients or that I just find engaging for myself. Then I'll observe that creator's frequency of posting, their style, how they engage in the comments, and how their videos do generally. I'll also read their descriptions and look at the hashtags that they're using to see if they're doing anything differently than what I'm doing. I also read a lot of comments. I spend a lot of time in comment sections. Now, you'll want to be careful which comment sections you're wading through. There are some terrifying places on the internet, but others are very lovely, and I found that TikTok seems to be more lovely than not, at least my algorithm. But the comments will give you an idea of if the creator is even responding back to those people, what the commenters are talking about, how they're talking about the content, or what they're engaging with from the video. And you can get an idea of things that are lacking. If the commenters are asking for something, increased frequency, 
less of something or a different style, then that can give you a good idea of what you want to try for your business. I also recommend because your business that you follow your competitors who are on the platform if they're there just to see what they're doing, again, to keep tabs on them, to see what the customers are asking them, and maybe see if there is a way that you can fill a gap in your niche. Also, don't ignore following smaller creators that you stumble across on TikTok. People are using the app in really creative ways, and you can get a lot of great ideas from everywhere. It's not just the big creators who have all of the good ideas. Also, following smaller creators will give you a good list of potential influencers that you can connect with later on, and people that you can build relationships with. Hey, we just helped a small business make over $1.5 million through Facebook advertising. And after managing millions of dollars in ad spend for thousands of different small businesses, we have decided to give away everything we learned to you in a special program. If you wanna learn the blueprint to success, the best practices from some of the fastest growing companies in the world, and all of the different tools you will need, then sign up for our social ads training program today. Okay, so let's get into learning the platform a little bit more now that you know how I go about this generally. It's important to understand who's using the platform and how they're using it, so I have some statistics for you now. As far as users on TikTok, 53% identify as male and 47% are female. Roughly 50% of TikTok's global audience is under the age of 34. There are 100 million monthly active users in the US alone on TikTok. TikTok users spend an average of 52 minutes per day on the app, which is wild. <laughs> and most users of the app will use the app more than once a day. Now, how the platform is used? It's used to share and watch short form video content. Videos started at 15 to 30 seconds long, but they've slowly been increasing in time length. Now you can do three minute long videos. However, I have noticed that most creators are using the three minute videos sparingly. A lot of comment sections are saying that three minutes just feels too long in most instances. Now, another great thing about the platform is how easy it is to go viral or get onto a trend and get a lot of views on your video. Being able to jump on these trends and understand how they work is really essential to any organic content and even advertising on the platform. So now let's look at how trends work and why you need to jump on those quickly. Now, trends are hashtags, sounds, challenges, effects, or formats of videos that are really popular right now. On your Discover page, you can see a mixture of trending hashtags, trending sounds, challenges, and other things, and trending topics. For example, coffee is gonna be huge right now as we move into pumpkin spice latte season. You wanna act on trends quickly on TikTok. They move very fast. If you see a trend that you like, a sound, or something that sparks an idea, you'll wanna create that and post that within a couple of days, otherwise it may be too late. I'll show you how to tell if a sound or hashtag is still trending in just a couple of minutes, so stick around for that. One of the things about the trends is that they're really fun to jump onto, but they can get saturated quickly. So it's really important to get onto the trends earlier in the game. But how are you going to do that if you wait to find them on the Discover page? You can follow the hashtag trend alert on TikTok. It's full of the beginning of a trending wave. So you can catch things early on. People watch the frequency of sounds being used in the last 24 to 48 hours. They watch how frequently hashtags are being used and use this information to tell when something is about to get really, really huge. You also wanna check your niche hashtags here. These won't hold big trends that will get you millions and millions of views probably, but they will hold the trends in your community with people who are most likely to buy from you. So it's important to be really active in your niche talk. Now, if you haven't heard of these, there is a niche community on TikTok for pretty much everything. Very broad things are tech talk and art talk, but then you can get really drilled down into cleaning talk or something like that. Now, if you find something that you wanna use in a video, of course you wanna make sure that it's still trending if that's your goal. If your goal is to ride a trend to try to get a lot of views, obviously you wanna do that. Now, if your goal is to get onto a trend, then you need to make sure that whatever sound you're hearing or hashtag you're looking at is still trending. To do that, you wanna tap through to the page that houses the sound or the hashtag information with the creator's info and all of the videos that are using that. Scroll through the most recent videos and check the dates on them. If you're noticing that most of the videos haven't been posted within the last day or two, then it's a good indication that this trend is either on its way out or is completely dead. If that's the case, then using this sound won't give you the boost that you're looking for. That's okay to still use it if you like it and it fits with your marketing purposes, but if you were only using it for the trend, then it's too late. Huh, what's that? 
Oh, they don't know why the date is on TikTok. Oh, right. When I was first on TikTok, people would talk about seeing the date on posts, and I had no idea what they were talking about. I could not find it. So I'm going to highlight it here for you in case you also struggle with that. You can find the date on a TikTok post above the description next to the username. Sometimes it looks a little hidden. Sometimes I forget it's there, but that's where you'll find it. Okay, let's move on to another thing that businesses don't understand about the platform. TikTok is not as serious as other platforms are, even by social media standards. That means you need to have fun when you're creating your ads and you need to stop taking yourself so seriously. It turns audiences on TikTok off and they will scroll right past. There are two sides to TikTok, but there is one side that is lightheartedness, it is dancing, it's comedy, it's authenticity and connection. It's also casual. Any content that doesn't fit this mold just feels out of place and is something that people will skip by. You also want to consider the audience. 50% of the users are under 34. Most of these folks are looking for some sort of an escape, even if they want information, even if they're looking for connection, they're looking to be a little bit removed from everything that's going on. If you can give them that escape, make them feel like they're part of something else, they will fall in love with you. That leads me to my next point, which is being salesy on TikTok does not work. As I mentioned, the audience is younger. They're Gen Z, they're millennials, and they do not like pushy or salesy advertisements. In fact, they don't like advertisements that feel like advertisements at all. Gen Z and millennials prefer engaging with your ad when it's relevant to them. So make sure you do your research on the audience before you create and target your ads. I mentioned before that TikTok is built on authenticity, and that holds true for businesses. The users on TikTok expect businesses to be kind of like people. They want to see fun, they want to see honest, and they want to feel like you care about more than just the sale. Okay, like other platforms, TikTok uses hashtag to organize and make information searchable. But the way you use hashtags on TikTok is a little bit different than other platforms. So I have a quick note on that for you. Unlike on Instagram, using a bunch of hashtags is actually not helpful for you on TikTok. On Instagram, you're going to use 30 hashtags and I tell my clients to max those out if they can. On TikTok though, you will only use four to five hashtags maximum on your video. You do have a character limit on your description and the hashtags are included in that limit as are any mentions. If you're looking for some inspiration on hashtags, I like to scan hashtags while I'm scrolling through other creators' videos just to see if there's a trend that people are using. Sometimes every single video will have the same hashtag, so that can be a strategy to help you get a boost in the algorithm. I also like to search for hashtags in the search bar on TikTok. You go to the search bar and start typing in any keyword that you're looking for, and you'll see suggestions auto-populate. When you search, you'll be able to sort through top, users, videos, sounds, and hashtags. I also really like this feature where you can filter results. I often like to choose the most liked from yesterday to give me a good idea of what's fresh. Okay, let's talk about businesses neglecting user-generated content and not working with influencers. Honestly, if you don't use user-generated content on TikTok, it's not even worth advertising on the platform and I'm saying that in all seriousness. The bedrock foundation of TikTok is engagement. And I know that you're thinking, well, Morgan, the bedrock foundation of any social media platform is engagement. <laughs> and yes, you are correct. But on TikTok, that engagement is flipped and reversed, just like Missy Elliott taught us. On other platforms, we see a lot of people commenting, and maybe the creators will like the comment, will respond to a couple of them. But after that, there's really not a lot of engagement for most influencers on other platforms. That is changing, though, which I think is great. On TikTok though, there's a different expectation. The expectation is that when I engage with your video, the creator should engage back. Not with everybody, we understand that that's not possible, but the creator is expected to be very active in the comment sections. And the same applies to businesses as well. I'll actually share an example from Target in a little bit about how they interacted in comment sections. Let's look at how to promote and encourage user-generated content so that you can start using it. One of the ways that users can interact with your video is by doing duets. This shows the user's video next to your original video. I've seen folks use these to respond, to react, or to engage with the original video, like do a skit with them. Now, if you want to duet someone's video, you tap the share arrow down here. If you don't have the option, then that means this creator does not allow duets for their videos. This can be turned on or off in these settings. A lot of folks will still duet videos like this by just screen recording the video and then posting it on top of theirs. 
But if that option is available to you, select duet from the options, record your video, then edit your video, fill out the description, get your hashtags, and post. The creator of the video that you duetted will be tagged in it and they will be notified. Stitches are another great way to get users to interact with your content. Stitches are similar to duets, but these ones allow you to use a five second clip of the video. This is a great way to include someone else's content in your video and give them the proper credit, of course, and it doesn't require any extra effort like tracking down handles on your part. If you want to stitch a video that you're watching, tap that same share button again. And again, if the option isn't available, then that user has not allowed stitches. Then you'll select stitch from the options. You'll choose the five seconds of the clip that you would like to use. You can shorten it by adjusting the bars or slide the clip to find the section that you'd like to use. Record your video, edit, add your text or anything that you'd like to do, then add your description and your hashtags and post. So now that you know how to actually do that, here are some ideas for stitches and duets to use for your business. The first is to share how to's and tutorials and ask people to stitch showing their process or their finished product. You could also teach a hack or a quick tip for your niche and ask people to stitch or duet sharing their hack or their quick tip that they've learned through the years. You can save all of these and then stitch five second clips of each person sharing together to make a larger video of all of your user generated tips. Then you're getting multiple pieces of content from this one video. The next thing you can do is do a big reveal and ask people to duet or stitch their reaction to the reveal. Ask them to do this before they see the reveal so you can get an honest, authentic look. You can ask questions or do a quiz. A really popular format right now is the put a finger down option. Put a finger down if Facebook has ever personally victimized you. Put a finger down if you're tired of two off codes. Another fun one I saw recently was asking people to react to songs from the 90s. Side note, if you can hit on nostalgia on TikTok, you are in because that group is nostalgic. Those are just a few ideas. I like to keep a running list of really fun ideas that I see other creators do. That way I can be thinking about them in the background and thinking of ways that I can make those fit the businesses that I'm helping advertise. Another great way to get user-generated content is to message people who are making content about your business and ask them permission to use their video across the board in advertisements or on your organic feed. Now, of course, you should tag them, give them credit, drive traffic to their profiles, and all of those things as well. But if you notice that your video is going above and beyond, I recommend giving them a little bit of extra things. You may have all seen or heard of the video of the farm worker in southern Idaho who was headed to work drinking ocean spray and listening to a Fleetwood Mac song. It's a fantastic video. Just makes you smile. This video did so well that the song and ocean spray saw huge success, made millions of dollars. As a thank you, Ocean Spray gave a car to the creator. Obviously, you don't have to give cars away to people, and that's a bit of a different thing, but you can still go above and beyond. Let me talk to you about how I would do that. I've actually used this method to help my clients encourage user-generated content and get more user-generated content on Instagram and Facebook. And those platforms are a little bit different, but the basic strategy is the same. So I had a client who was reinvigorating their social media. They hadn't been posting for a while, had been a little bit hot and cold, so they were really trying to add some fuel to the fire. One of the things that I did is monitored socials, and anytime someone posted a picture of themselves using the product or with the finished product, this was a craft kit business, I would react and comment publicly with praise and thanks. I also like to ask questions to get them talking to me a little bit more so I can learn a little bit more about them. I also sent them a private message. In this private message, I thanked them again. I asked their permission to use the post on our feed and I gave them a coupon code for 25% off their next purchase. The customers were always very surprised when I did this. You could tell that it made their day. They were always thrilled and posting about it, telling people about their great experience, leaving reviews. It was really good for business. Now, it took a few months of hard work and doing this consistently, but eventually the amount of user-generated content that we were getting tripled and the quality of user-generated content went up a lot. Customers were working harder to take better photos, improve their lighting, all of those things. In fact, it had increased so much that we were able to use one piece of user-generated content every single day and we still had extras. That saved our content creation team a lot of time and it just made it more fun for everybody. 
We were able to celebrate the customers and to help them make new friends. Now, a strategy like that does take time and effort. And it does require that you're posting content consistently and that you have an account. So what do you do on TikTok if you're brand new and you don't really have time to wait to grow your account organically before you want to see results? You work with an influencer. And a lot of small businesses are skipping this step because they think it's not affordable for them. That couldn't be further from the truth. Influencer marketing is an excellent way to skip the hassle of growing your following, engaging with people to promote your product. These people have already built up an engaged following who like them and who trust them. And they do a really good job at communicating with this following. You can find influencers in your niche who have a smaller following count who won't be quite as expensive as what you're probably imagining influencer marketing to cost you. For just a couple hundred dollars post, you can find someone with a very engaged audience to promote your product. Now, notice that I talked about engagement more than your following count. In my opinion, engagement is way, way, way more important than follower count when you're looking for an influencer. I would not pay for an influencer that had less than 3% engagement rate for any of my clients, and you shouldn't either. You can use an influencer marketing platform to find an influencer. These are usually really helpful because you can work within your budget, you have the safety of the platform backing you for communication and payment exchanges, and there's a large pool to choose from. Now, I've found that when you're working with influencers, it's best to just let them do their thing. You can kind of tell when an influencer has gotten a scripted ad because it usually feels much different than their content that they regularly post. This will turn off the users from your product because it will feel weird to them and it can damage the influencer's relationship with the audience. So this just isn't a good strategy for anybody involved. Give them a few guidelines, a few branding requirements, and let them do the rest. If you want more on working with influencers, let us know in the comments. Okay, the next mistake is only posting ads on TikTok, not really bothering with an organic strategy or not taking it seriously. Paid advertising can't be your only strategy on TikTok because the algorithm just won't let you work that way. You'll need to ensure that you're posting organic content regularly and that you're engaging in the comment sections on your video and other creators' videos. Also, liking and sharing, messaging people helps with the algorithm as well. Check out our TikTok playlist here for more on an organic TikTok marketing strategy. Now, the next mistake is getting your targeting wrong, not using those custom and lookalike audiences. Just like on other advertising platforms like Facebook, you want to be using those custom and lookalike audiences to see the best results at the lowest cost for your ads. I don't have time to go over custom and lookalike audiences today, but I did recently do a video on this full setup process. For a full video explaining that process, including tutorials on setup, you can watch my TikTok marketing for beginners video. Now the next mistake is ignoring the comments section or really only responding to one or two comments and getting out of there. Just like you can't post and run on other platforms like Instagram, you can't just drop an ad and run on TikTok or post and run on TikTok. You need to be engaging in your comments sections, you need to be sending and responding to messages, sharing videos, and engaging in other people's comment sections. And that's because algorithm demands it and so do the users. Remember, this is a flipped and reversed scenario where the creators are expected to be as engaged as the users are. If you're not responding to these comments, people will stop commenting, you'll stop getting that boost in the algorithm on your videos, and you'll lose those users who were so excited to engage with you at the beginning. Take a look at this example from Target. Look at how active they are in these comment sections, even on the videos that don't have very many likes, don't have very many comments. They're engaging with really big creators and small creators equally. The final mistake that I see is businesses don't know the creative tools available to them and therefore aren't making the most of their TikTok ads. I'm gonna go over all the tools available to you and then I'll show you how to set up automated creative optimization ads. TikTok wants to make advertising on the platform easier for you, so they've built these tools for you. Video templates, smart video, quick optimization, the built-in editor for any of the videos that you make on the platform, smart text, which is going to auto-populate suggestions for you in the future. This tool actually isn't available quite yet and automated creative optimization, which is a good mixture of dynamic creative, dynamic placements, A-B testing, and more. Now you wanna spend time with each of these tools doing testing, learning about it, seeing what it can do for your business. But the one that I would recommend starting with is this 
creative optimization. Advertising your business means you're doing a lot of ad creation and a lot of testing and optimizing of ads. And that takes up a lot of your time, which is why I'm a huge fan of automated creative optimization. You'll upload a bunch of different versions of creative and copy and let TikTok do the hard work of finding the right audience for you. Here's some of the advantages of using automated creative. There's automatic A-B testing, so you'll find the best versions of your ad more quickly and at a better cost. It saves you time and effort because you can just upload a whole bunch or choose from your existing TikTok library. And again, let TikTok do the hard work. It also extends the life of your ads because you're not showing the same ad to every single person. So the likelihood of me seeing the exact same ad again is pretty low. It also gets you more quality traffic to your website. Good ads that reach the right people at the right time with the right message are gold. Let's look how to set this up in the TikTok ads manager. This is kind of a long tutorial, so take a break, grab a pencil, grab a cup of coffee, and come back if you need to. But be sure to come back. You don't want to miss this. Okay, go to ads.tiktok.com and select your account. Click on the campaign page. Click on create to start creating your campaign. Choose your objective, name your campaign, and I suggest toggling on the campaign budget optimization toggle and create split test toggle. You'll need to set your daily budget to at least $50 and click next. Enter your ad group name, choose your pixels, select your placements. I recommend going automated placements and then click next. Toggle the switch on for automated creative optimization here. Next, choose your audience and targeting and set your budget if you're requested to do that again. On your ad settings page, you can start to upload your videos or images. Now, the more images and videos that you upload, the more combinations that TikTok will be able to create for you, which means better ads. But you do need to upload at least 10. Your ad name will have this dynamic tag that will update depending on whatever creative is being used for that ad. Only you can see the ad name, so don't worry about this too much. Next, you'll fill in your ad details and upload your creatives. Enter your display name and your ad text. This text is visible to the audience and you're allowed between 12 and 80 characters. That includes hashtags, so keep that in mind. Notice that this is where the display name appears and that you have options for multiple versions of text. You can add up to five and I recommend adding all five. If you wanna run your ad in other languages, you can also use this auto translation feature, which actually works pretty well and I really like the format of it. It's very easy to use. Now you may want to have someone double check your translations before you go live with them because I don't know how accurate this is going to be, but seems like a great tool. Now there's soon going to be a smart text option where there will be an autofill kind of like what Google does for your ads, and I'm excited to see how that goes. So hopefully that will be here soon. Enter your call to action or use a dynamic call to action, and then enter your URL and double check your tracking selections make sure the correct pixel is chosen. Preview your ads, which you can do on the right column. It will scroll along beside you as you're adjusting your campaign and click submit. Congrats, your automated ad is launched and now TikTok is going to do the rest of the hard work for you. You wanna monitor the performance and make adjustments to your campaign as you go. Also, after the ad ends, you'll want to evaluate that and see what changes you need to make for upcoming ads. If you want help with that, let us know in the comments. Now, if you're curious what creative combinations are showing after you launch your ad and uploaded all of those options, you can actually see those in the account. This is nice to check too, just to make sure that all of your text and graphics make sense when they're combined together. Sometimes it can be kind of hard to see when you're working with a large volume of content. So click on the campaign page, click on the ad group list, and find the name with your ad group. Look for the one with a folder icon next to it. When you click the ad group, you can see all the combinations of creative. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you avoid those big mistakes, you'll be able to run more effective, more cost efficient campaigns for your business. And you'll be able to spend less time doing it, which I think is a win for everybody. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up to let me know. And make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our new digital marketing content. Also check out these videos for more. If you wanna learn how to DIY your marketing like a pro, check out our new online classes. All right, that's it for me today. I'll see you next time.